Why do you like such a term in terms of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi? Say it again. What's Planck's constant divided oh, by right. 2 pi? Huh, is this supposed to be h or h bar? Let's look that up in the book. Maybe I got the formula wrong. It says h, just a normal. No, yeah, you're right. In the book, it's just h. So if you just divide that by 2 pi? So we're allowed to use M in our answer, we're allowed to use L, but we're not allowed to use H. Instead, the problem says that we have to use H bar. And they told us that H bar is H divided by 2 pi. So, okay, so that just H bar 2 pi? That's right. So we need to use substitution. So we should solve this for H. And we would get that h is 2 pi h bar. So in order to satisfy the rules of the problem, we shouldn't be using h here. We should be using 2 pi h bar. We can always use pi, because pi is just a number. They don't have to give us permission to use pi. After all, they didn't give us permission to use the number 8, either. Oh, yeah. uh, although, actually, now that I look at it, we can simplify this. How does this simplify? 4 and L squared squared Well, they didn't give us permission to use the number 4, but we're still allowed to do that. We can use any number whenever we feel like it. All right, so if we didn't make any uh, careless mistakes, that would be um, the right wavelength here. All right, this is a very typical type of question, so we should review here. Now, a lot of the, the steps here that you knew well, that is, you saw that you were going to have to find the frequency um, and using E equals HF, and you saw that you were then going to find the wavelength using C equals F lambda. The part that gave you trouble was putting in the right energy over here, and here's where the picture comes in handy. Remember that the question is asking for the wavelength of the photon. Um, well, to figure that out, we need to know the frequency of the photon, and to figure that out, we need the energy of the photon, but the photon is not the original energy level or the final energy level. The photon is what allows you to go from one energy level to the next. So the photon ha must have an energy that's equal to the difference between these energy levels. The photon must be bringing in an energy that's equal to the difference between these energy levels. So it's not enough to find the two energy levels. We still had to subtract them in order to find the energy that the photon was bringing in. So it's always good to make a little picture like this so you can see the relationship between the photon and the electron. By the way, uh, if I had to predict, so the first problem that we did was a big uh, calculus and algebra problem using psi and psi squared, yeah. right? Uh, if I had to predict, that's probably not the kind of thing you're going to see on the final yeah. exam. Now, the second question that we did was a problem with photons moving electrons between energy levels. This is very likely to be the kind of thing you would see on the exam. So this is very, a very test-like question, because you know oftentimes on the exam, they don't give you numbers, you just work with algebra. So this question here is very good one to save and to review when you're preparing for the final, because that would be a good final exam problem. And I think the problem that you just mentioned would also be a good final exam problem. So let's take